And it's always my honor and privilege to welcome in Coach Gene Stallings. Coach, I hope you've had a great summer. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. Ryan, I'm fine. I'm looking forward to the season getting started. And it looks like Alabama's going to be number one in the preseason. And I think they'll have a great year. Hey, Coach, I, I want to get your thoughts on a couple of different things. I, I, I know Phil Savage was uh, a GA here. I, I don't. He wasn't with you. I, I know he left here. But you, you know Phil Savage, obviously, he's got a lot of scouting experience. Uh, he's the color commentator. He made a comment after watching practice yesterday uh, on his social network account. He said, this defense will be the fastest and most athletic Nick Saban has had in his 10 seasons. Uh, that's pretty incredible. Uh, big comment there. Yeah, I, I think I think he's right. Uh, I don't know whether he's going to be better than some of the outstanding teams that they've had, but uh, I think that they're going to be extremely good defensively. Uh, you know, uh, if they do have a, a question mark, maybe it's uh, who's going to be the quarterback. But I think they'll get that settled by game time, and, and I'm looking forward to them having a great year. Coach, what goes into a quarterback competition? How stressful is that for a coach as you're trying to evaluate and try to make the correct decision? Well, it's uh, the stressful is just when you have one, he's not good enough. Uh, that's when you have a little stress on you. You've got two good ones, that's that's not a problem. You know, uh, if, if one of them can't perform, you put the other one in. And uh, it's, it's not all that important who starts the game. It's it's uh, how they play when they're on the field. I, uh, I had a saying that never confuse activities with the coffee results of what counts so we're looking for a quarterback that can get some results and i think they'll they'll find that guy and, and we'll go with it how important is it when you look at the quarterback and, and allowing his teammates to buy into to that's the leader of their team well uh by nature of the position it, it requires leadership but uh most of the time the offensive guard and the center and the tackle they're worried about their position. They're worried about their performance. They're not too worried about the quarterback. Now, we talk about the quarterbacks and, and so forth, but most of the players are worried about what they do and how they perform, rather than worry about how the quarterback's playing. Coach, there's a, there's a big discussion here. You've got a redshirt freshman that's in the competition. You've got a junior that's been here for four years and has been a part of the quarterback competition for the last couple of years, but you've got a true freshman. He's out of Texas. He's a a very mobile quarterback. Some say that he reminds, um, as far as a young Deshaun Watson, the young man's at Clemson, mobile quarterback, got a good arm. But what would go into playing a true freshman as far as at that quarterback position? Well, if he's the best one, that, that says that you've got an outstanding player. They, they're they going to play the best player, whether it's not a sophomore, junior, seniors. If your freshman is the best player, that says he's better than sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And he'll get experiences as the games go by, but they, uh, they're going to end up playing the best football player, and he's going to be starting quarterback. Coach, can you remember uh... – in your play, coaching days as an assistant or as a head coach playing a, a true freshman? No, no, I don't. I, uh, freshmen weren't really eligible for the varsity back when I was coaching. And, and uh, so I I really don't know a whole lot about uh, starting a true freshman. I, I'm sure that I might have even done some some of the time, but I don't really remember. Uh, coach, uh, also, you had a chance – obviously, to win a national title in 1992. Coming off of that national title, do you have to handle the team different to to fight becoming complacent? No. no last year was last year. That belonged to people who's on that team. This year is this year, and this belongs to players that's on this team. Just because you were associated with the team that won the national championship uh, doesn't give you a buy to uh, you still got to earn your spurs. You got to earn your position. You got to play extremely well. Uh, you have got the legacy to build upon. But as far as is uh, uh, falling down, a uh, uh, saying we're here because we won it last year. That that ain't got a thing to do with it. I I will assure you that that uh, Alabama's players will feel like that they're somewhat of an underdog when they go to Dallas playing that first game. Now they won't be, but they'll feel that way. Coach, can you think about the uh, the history of these two games? I'm, ta- I'm talking about that fir- the first two teams in USC and Alabama. That's a lot of tradition on one football field. 
Yeah, it is. And uh, great traditions. And they have great football teams at, at Southern Cal and, and uh, Alabama, obviously. Is a great. They've been great for years and years. And Coach Saban has is, is maintained that. And that's hard to do to maintain a uh, degree of, of football year after year after year. You've got to give credit to Coach Saban and his staff for doing that. It's sort of easy to maybe win it once every once in a while, but it's hard to win it year after year after year and keep that, that focus and that those players ready to play. Uh, Southern Cal has, has got uh, a great tradition, but uh, I'd say that when the game starts, Alabama's going to be the favorite because they'll be the best football team and uh, usually the favorite wins. But when I was coaching, I always wanted to be the favorite. I'd said that, that I had the best team. I didn't always win it, but I wanted to be the favorite. Coach, can, you're looking at four out of the last seven years, Alabama's been crowned as the national champ. Are we witnessing uh, the best run, maybe the best dynasty in college football history? I did. Well, it is right now. I, uh, you know, the, the, the question that people keep asking about is if Coach Bryant, Coach Saban, uh, they're different eras at different times. Uh, uh, when we came to Alabama, the, they didn't have any, even have air conditioning in the dorm. Uh, you look at the facilities that Alabama has now, they're, they're second to none. Uh, Alabama now recruits all over the country. Coach Byron recruited primarily in Alabama. Um, both of them did outstanding jobs with what they had. Now, I don't know why people want to compare one against the other. Uh, the two of the greatest coaches it's ever been. There's no question about that. But as far as who's best, uh, that's debatable. Coach, what what is going through your mind before the season as a coach in, in preparation? Do you feel like most coaches know what type of football team they have as we're now single digits away from most games starting? Yeah, they they have a pretty good idea. You know, they they've seen them. Uh, uh, during spring practice, they've seen them through the fall practice, and now school struggling. And one, one man. Back when I was coaching uh, the Cowboys, primarily, I ranked my players every day. I coached secondary. I said, "Who's the best player? I've got second best player, third best player, fourth best player." And when I was coaching at Alabama, I did the same thing. Uh, I will know who the best player I had, the second best player, third best player. And I, I would ask the staff from time to time, get out a pencil and paper, and, and uh, let's write down the, the 10 best players, regardless of position. And you get, get your best players on the field, you're going to win most of the time. Coach, I, I know it has to be an honor to see one of your former players succeed in, in anything they do. Uh, but just looking at someone that pays so much respect, we had Dabo on a, a couple of months ago, and uh, I mean, he spent minutes and minutes of just talking about what you meant to him and, and, and sort of the guidance that you've been able to guide. You, you have to be smiling ear to ear to, to see what he's been able to accomplish. I'm extremely proud. In fact, I've got a grandson who's playing for him. Uh, he's 6'5", 240, tied in. Uh, probably big red shirt this year. Got hurt in two-day practice. Uh, but he's happy there. The, uh, that whole house of players extremely well, and and they've recruited well, and they've got an outstanding quarterback. So you can't count anybody out that has an outstanding quarterback. So I think they got it ranked right in Alabama and Clemson. And at the end of the year, we'll see somebody who'll probably lose a game that they shouldn't. Uh, the surprise team to me in this part of the country is Tennessee. Uh, they're ranked extremely high, and they, I'm sure they're, they're awfully hungry for a good year. And I think Alabama plays them in, in Knoxville, so that would be a good football game to watch. And, Coach, there's some difficult games for Alabama on the road. Matter of fact, they've got five away from Bryant at the stadium, four in the SEC, then they've got that neutral side at USC. It's some, a challenging schedule when you've got to go to Baton Rouge, Fayetteville, Arkansas, Knoxville, and then go into Oxford, and Ole Miss has had their – their streak here of uh, winning Alabama's games uh, to, uh, uh, consecutive years. If you're going to win, if you're going to have a good football team, you've got to win at home, you've got to win on the road. You can't worry about where the next team is. You can't worry about playing in the afternoon or playing at night. You've got to get ready for your next opponent and somebody figure out uh, where you're playing and what time you're playing. You just you cannot worry about that. You've got to worry about what you've got. I'm sure Coach Saban is concerned about Alabama. It's not the least bit concerned about Tennessee, uh, Ole Miss, and some of those other teams. Now, when time comes around, 
that's a little different story. But right now, the only team that Coach Saban's concerned with is Alabama. Coach, the officials, uh, we, we've had a chance to feature the director of officials, Rogers Redding, which is the in charge of all of college football. Uh, we've had Steve Shaw, which is the director of officials for the SEC. Uh, they say that this year they're going to put a point of emphasis on calling ineligible linemen downfield. Uh, it, it's a three-yard rule in college. It's a one-yard rule in the NFL. But now they're saying they're not going to give that flexibility of getting those offensive linemen six, seven yards down the field. How difficult is that for uh, the second-level guys, linebackers and defensive backs, who are reading an offensive lineman, and he's firing off uh, like a run play, but really they're throwing the football? Yeah, well, that, that creates a little little discomfort level. But, that, uh, you know, the, the big deal is the concussions. Uh, the headgear is meant for protection. It's not being used as a weapon. Somewhere along the line, uh, they've got to put some punishment to somebody that uses the headgear as a weapon. And I'm, I'm saying you set him out for five games, uh, something of that nature. You just don't let him not play that game or maybe half the next. If you set him down for five games, uh, then you'll see less and less of these concussions. I'm more concerned about that than the offensive lineman downfield. Coach, uh, final question. When you look at an elite defense, if you have an elite defense, in the current time of college football when you've got to be able to score points, can you ride a defense to a national title or, or does it take both? Does it take balance? That takes both. I mean, you, you can't be one dimensional in this day and time and have a great team. Now, if I could have a great defense or a great offense, I personally would have a great defense. Uh, my philosophy of offense is when we get the ball, I want to score, kick it a score, and move it out far enough that when a punch, they got to go 80 yards with it. Now, if I can do that, I force you to go 80 yards every time you get it. We're going to get good field position, and we're going to get some points as long as you have a good field goal. Here. And that's a great point. You look at 80 yards, they've got a great punter here in Tuscaloosa. That may be the game plan. See if the teams can drive 80 yards against this defense consistently. Uh, I don't think most teams can. I don't can. think you can. I just, uh, <laughs> and I, you just don't give the ball away, don't make mistakes, and, and throw interceptions at Fomal and make them go 80 yards to beat you, and, and you're going to see Alabama in the winner's circle. You try to go conservative if you if you know that you've got a great punter and a great defense, and, and maybe. You know, I was, uh, yeah, I was conservative anyway. I, you know, when we'd get the ball down to the 10 or 15 yard line, I'd tell my people, I'd say, look, I want to come away with points. Uh, I'm not interested in throwing interception and fumble the footballs. I want to come away with points. I'd rather have three points and no points. Uh, so in order to do that, you become maybe all three conservative, and that's probably what I was. Coach, it's always an honor and a privilege to talk to you. I know you've got a speaking engagement coming up in, in just a little bit. I, I appreciate you jumping on for a couple of minutes and spending some time talking some Alabama football. I look forward to doing this each and every week as we'll talk more about Alabama in the coming days. Thank you again, Coach. Well, Ron, I appreciate it. Yeah, we're, we're speaking tonight, raising money for Live Beyond, uh, building a facility called Johnny's House. Uh, we're in AT, the little special ed child has a place to live, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good crowd to raise some money. Coach, uh, where is that at? It's uh, it's in Birmingham. It's, it's a haven, and it starts at 630, and uh, it's, it's raising money for Johnny's House. And hopefully we'll... Um, raise enough money to get it started, and we'll probably won't raise enough money to complete it, but it'll be a good start for us. And and, and if, I, if I can ask, where, where will the Johnny's house be again? Say that again. Where, where will the Johnny's house be again? Where, 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 where were you aiming at building that at? It's in Haiti, the country of Haiti. Okay, okay, my bad. I'm sorry, I, I missed that. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, in Thomas O. Haiti is a town of 170,000 without any electricity and poorest country in the world and when you're born, born with a disability they, they just sort of put you out you just got to sort of savage around and live on four uh, steps of the anyway so we're, we're going to build a facility where those children can come and live and have a place to eat and get three meals a day and, and some clothes and a house to live in and, and that's what we're doing. That is that is so awesome, and and, and our, our signal now reaches up in the Birmingham area, so we have a lot of listeners there. Uh, if you, you have an interest in going out and supporting Coach Stallings and, and what he's doing there, uh, I'll try to get the exact details and pass that on in the 5 o'clock hour. 
Uh, Coach, th- thank you again for jumping on. I- I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Thank you again. Right. Looking forward to another good year with you, my friend.